So you download a new productivity app, you spend hours setting it up, and then you use it for one day. And then you forget about it. How relatable is that? With the new school year coming up, you're probably looking for the best possible productivity apps out there to make you the most perfect student this school year and tame your procrastination. Trust me, I know how endless the whole cycle of searching for productivity apps is from personal experience. And actually, you might have already come across Notion. Notion is a system that allows you to create entire workspaces from yourself. You can take notes, create to-do lists, create databases, literally possibilities with Notion are endless. However, if you're a beginner, this might be a little intimidating and you just might be lost when you enter that whole power of Notion. Lucky for you, I spent weeks trying to research the best Notion blogs and the best Notion YouTube tours on the internet to create the most ultimate setup for students in university like me. This video will include all of the different templates I'm using for my entire life, not just university, so if you're interested in something in particular, look in the timestamps of the video or in the description down below. Let's get on to it. So I have my Notion here over on my MacBook, and by the way, you can set it up on your phone or your, on your iPad, literally, I think any device supports Notion. And we run into the homepage, which serves as the default page for my Notion workspace. You can see this little cover over here, which I downloaded off of Pinterest. If you watched any of my videos, you literally know how obsessed with Pinterest I am. I have a cute little icon over here of a heart-shaped emoji, and when you enter my homepage, you see that there's a couple of widgets, a couple of pictures, and a dashboard, which is basically the main purpose of the homepage. I have the widget over here of weather in Copenhagen. I know I'm not there yet, however, I will be soon, which is why it's over there. I have this picture that I also found on Pinterest. There's also this widget over here, which is actually my Google Calendar. It is all synced up, which I literally just found out about, and I never knew that you can sync up different like Notion calendars and Google calendars and Apple calendars. It is so cool and it is definitely very useful because I just like to see all my events right away. I also have my personal tasks and by the way, I have this cute little button over here. I don't think like a lot of people do this, but I just find it so cute and so like automated. You basically click onto here and it already creates a to-do task for you. So instead of having to go over here and write a to-do. So by the way, you can do that by putting the slash button and then scrolling down all the way to over here, which is a button. And then you create one and then you make it do something. So it is very easy. And by the way, if you guys want a full sort of uh, tutorial in Notion, not really a tour, but a whole tutorial, I will definitely create one. Just let me know in the comments down below. So in my homepage, I also synced up my database, which is called Coming Up. It is basically a database of my, all my assignments and all my schoolwork, all the exams and different to-do tasks. I just put them all in one place so then I can kind of like take out of that database in different uh, pages. So the Coming Up uh, database has this table sort of view. You have uh, like the task, whether it's completed or not, you have the course. So this one is like a option sort of feature where you can pick which course it's in or if it's general. Then you have uh, the name of the task, when it's due, your notes, weighing, so like how much it like weighs onto your grade, the type and the formula. The formula is basically how many days are left until your task is due, which I think is really cute. And by the way, it has so many different features. I kind of stole this from, I forgot the channel, but I'm gonna link it down below and put it on the screen right now. So let's say it is due tomorrow and it's going to do this really cute feature, feature when it's going to say it's due tomorrow and same thing is going to happen when it's due today and it's going to have this like whole urgent emoji and same thing if it's overdue so that's kind of bad. The university page is probably my favorite page in my entire Notion account because it's just so pretty to me and it's so functional. I love the cover, I also found it on Pinterest and it has this little headphone emoji as the icon. Obviously it says university because that's what I'm going to use it for. It has this widget of a sort of flipping clock. I just like how it looks, but, but also if you're using Notion in the full screen mode, you kind of don't have that time at a glance. So I just like having it there in case I need to just check the time quickly. I have my schedule for this year and I also have eight hours of math on Wednesday. So we're just not going to mention it. 
Uh, we also have this whole daily calendar. It is also synced up to my Google calendar, so it's just a variation of the one I have on my homepage. It is very cute, however, it's a bit annoying how you can't change the colors of different um, events. You're kind of stuck with the default blue, no matter what it is in your Google calendar. And yeah, that's just a premium feature you have to pay for. And by the way, this is the website. I'm also gonna link it in the description where I find the widgets and how to sort of embed them. Underneath that, I also have another widget from the same website of when my university starts. One week and six days, eh, very close, sort of a bit frustrating, but let's move on. As it is done on the homepage, I also have the coming up sort of database synced up onto my university page. It has the do within the week and do within the next month. I think it's cute and I just like having all of these at a glance. I know right now it seems pretty empty, but that's because university hasn't started yet for me. And I'm sure about in three weeks, this is gonna be fully filled up. I also have two days to do with the same feature that I talked about, the button, which I'm personally obsessed with. I think it's really cute. Down below, I have my navigation with the courses, which is a page we're gonna look at after this. And I have sort of different mentions Mentions are basically links that are a bit more compact of the websites that I'm gonna need for uni And maybe there's gonna be more. I just don't know them yet. We also have quick links to courses This is the courses that I know I'm gonna be taking in the first semester So I just decided to pinpoint them right away so that I have quick access to them Anyways, let's head over to courses because it is basically the same things as the quick links except it's a separate page I also have a widget of Spotify on here and it's just very simple, it's study jazz, the one I usually use for studying and I have the coming up sort of database all the way linked here. As the name suggests, this is the to-do list by courses. I guess those are the courses I'm taking in the first semester and those are probably the smaller to-dos I'm gonna have to do, probably something like small and just so that I don't forget because if it's a big thing like an assignment, I'm gonna definitely put it in the coming up database. And by the way, talking about it, it's over here now in calendar mode. Notion has so many different modes you can have. It has the calendar view, the table view. It also has a board view. And I very much enjoy the board view as well because you can sort it into different subjects and the different tasks you have. But you can also sort it by different filters such as what is coming up soon, what you're done with, what you're working on. I have all of my courses, so this is going to be my database for all of the courses that I use. They're sort of separate pages. I'm just gonna go into one that I haven't set up yet just to sort of, you know, to keep my privacy. And all of this was borrowed from, I'm gonna put the name on the screen again because I just can't keep a name in my head apparently and in the description below. I find these really cute and I just didn't decide to change anything in them because for now they fit what I need and if that's gonna change I'm definitely gonna maybe like customize the things up a bit. So that was my courses page and my university page. So next up is the personal page. I have this little matcha tea emoji. If you've seen my haul, you know my obsession with matcha. And this is a little Studio Ghibli cartoon um, cover. So all the way on the left, you can see the dashboard, but you can also see the personal tasks on the right, which is also a linked block, which I forgot to mention when I was talking about my homepage. So basically, if I write something in one of the to-do tasks and it's gonna hopefully fingers crossed all the way there show up on the personal tasks in my homepage. so that is what a synced block is i also have a gallery view which is basically a database except in a different format i have this widget over here of books read i didn't want to make a whole different page of books that i've read because i do keep a good notes and i do keep an apple book sort of um, count of the books that i've read but i also just wanted to have a little reminder of how many books I read and maybe if I want to keep up with my goal. This particular calendar does not have any useful purpose because it is not synced up to my Google Calendar, but it is cute and pink. So the first tab that I have in my sort of personal gallery view is the finances tab. I have this cute little cat on it because it just describes my mood when anybody starts talking about finances to me. And also Notion has this cute little feature when it opens half a page instead of opening a full page right away. However, if you do want to use the page and not use it in combination with other pages, you probably do want to open it to a full page, which you can do in the corner button. This is a breadcrumb which shows you the pathway of all of the pages you went through when you came here. Notion has unlimited pages you can create. I mean, and in case you forgot how you got here to this page, you can always see 
where you kind of what pathway you took to get here. First thing you see on the finance planner is the balance calculator. I think this is the total sort of balance you have. By the way, this page is an adaptation of what I saw online, which will be linked below. So first you're hit with the balance calculator, which is kind of the overall sort of look at all of your finances. You have the starting balance, which is the initial sum you kind of start with. So something you've already gained before. You have your total income, which is synced to the income tab down below. So basically you have different sort of like incomes. You can just input them here. I don't know, have allowance or something. And let's say I got 700 Danish kroner in allowance. And that is gonna sync up to your total income over here and it's gonna give you the total balance. So here you can kinda see what you're working with for the month. And over on the right side, you have your budget, which is basically a budgeting sort of table. You have your category of things you can spend money on, and then you have the budgeted amount of money you have from your income to spend on that area of life. For example, let's just say I have, I don't know, like a thousand Danish kroner. I'm sorry if I'm not used to the currency yet, because if this is a ridiculous amount of money, don't blame me for it, but I just don't know the currency yet. And the total spent, which is the net sort of column, is gonna come from your total expenses over here. So for example, you're gonna have groceries and let's just say I spent a ridiculous 2000 Danish kroner on groceries. I don't know for how long, but you know, I spent it and I'm gonna put, not here, wait. I'm gonna put groceries in the category. And as you can see here, oh, food and drinks is in a different one. So let's just say, it was that budget as well for food and groceries. I am in the next column, as you can see, in the amount left, I am negative a thousand Danish kroner below my budget. And it gives me this little alarm sound, which um, signifies that I should probably stop eating. Using the breadcrumb I mentioned earlier, let's go back to the personal tab and go on to the next one, which is habits. I have this little sort of cover of good things take time. And let's open the full page. First of all, you're met with a table of the completion rate of your habits. Right now, you don't see anything because I haven't inputted any data yet. However, it is very nice and I'm going to show you an example of it. Next up, you see the sort of my habits page, which is in the shape of a calendar. You add this little plus sign of your daily habits. You write them down and you check mark everything that you did this day. So let's just say today I did everything. Let's just, let's pretend, huh? <laughs> And then you're gonna come back here and you're gonna see that your completion rate right now is 100%. And now you can also see the weekly rate, which is gonna come up as you do more sort of uh, activities. And you're just gonna see how many of the Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays separately you've done your habits. Going back to personal, we have uh, my recipes, shopping list, and meal plans. This is a default notion template. I just decided to put it in because I just think it's useful the way it is and I haven't really customized it yet except for adding some of my new recipes to it. So you have your navigation which is basically all your tables that are in this page. You have your recipes so you write down the recipe that you have. Uh, they have a bunch here but for example let's look at, I don't know, a Buddha bowl, right? So you enter that page by clicking open, you have your recipe source and you have your ingredients that are needed. So basically it's very easy to sync the ingredients that you need and the recipe so you can kind of go off of one another so you can create a successful meal plan for the week that doesn't involve buying everything from scratch. However, you can also customize these different meals from meal type. So there's dinner, miscellaneous, brunch, lunch, anything. You have your status, which is if it's try and test it or if it's like sort of you're still looking to try it out. You have your category of like whether it is like personal, whether it's from somewhere, whether it's on travel. So like, you know, sort of different categories for meals. You have the number of times you made it, you have when it's planned for. So if you're doing a meal plan, it's gonna sync up in the calendar below. And all the way here, you have the recipe write-up and you have the meal plan and the ingredients that are needed for it. On the right side, by the way, you are met with all of the ingredients that can possibly exist and you can always add your own ones, it's super easy and as well as that you have your little status, whether they're in stock on the shopping list or out of stock and the store where you buy them, the type and the different recipes that they're involved in. So obviously this sort of cooking page is something I'm going to be using a lot more when I live alone and I don't have 
my wonderful family to cook everything for me. However, I'm just excited to try it out and see the ingredients because it looks very useful and very practical for when you're in the supermarket and lost for the things that you want to buy. Anyways, now let's go back to the personal tab. I think that is everything I have in the gallery, but wait up, I also have two different tabs that I have to show you. Let's go on to YouTube. This tab is sort of small and still underdeveloped because I sort of only started using it with the last couple of videos because the ones before that were just kind of... I spoke as I went and I didn't have any pre-planning done. I also have this whole dashboard linked up and I have the video dashboard which is another database that I created. It is done in the sort of gallery view where I can see like the different boards which are not started in progress or done. As you can see the Notion setup, which is the video I'm doing right now, is still in progress and you can actually see my whole setup for it right now. I have different ideas and ideas for my thumbnail which are still not there, which I should have done probably before doing this video. So this serves to me as sort of like a big brain dump of everything that I could possibly do for this YouTube video if I have any ideas before going into it. And then I have my script, sort of the things that I wrote out, the things that I want to mention and just everything that, you know, goes on in this YouTube video, which I think is very useful and it definitely keeps me on track with my schedule and forces me to go on creating different, you know, YouTube videos. Moving on to the next page, which is the Denmark page. So if you guys don't know, I'm moving to Denmark from my university and this page is sort of customized to everything sort of legal and everything formal that I have to do in order to officially move to Denmark. I have the dashboard, but I also have the links, which include the same mentions that I, I talked about before. So there's different links to websites that might be useful. If Obviously, I'm not gonna share this entire gallery because it's very sort of Denmark move centered and I don't think everybody's interested in that. So I'm just gonna show you guys a random one, which is the health card application. I have all of the information that I need copied from the website and sort of tailored to my own needs with the whole like checklists and links and contact people that I sort of require because it is obviously very general on the website and I just wanted to keep a good account of the things that I still needed to do. And this was definitely in use when I was applying for my residence permit. As you can see, those were all of the checklists of the documents that I needed. And I just, you know, planned everything that I had to do in here. And I think it was very useful and definitely very organized sort of to keep things in track and to make sure I don't forget anything very important that might get me, like, I don't know, sent out of the country. I don't know what they can do if I forget to do something. With all of the tabs covered, I think this video is coming to an end. If you're interested in this type of productivity or school-related content, please make sure to follow the channel and consider giving this video a like, and definitely come back for more. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!